Okay, let's go ahead and talk about port scanning with Netcat. And, you know, there's other tools to do this, like Nmap and uh, some various other scanners out there, uh, both in the Windows and Linux market. Uh, but Netcat's been really a go-to tool for a very, very long time. Uh, it's a simple and quick uh, way to port scan, but it's not as comprehensive as things like Nmap uh, or something similar. Uh, but it is helpful in just a very basic sense just to get a quick idea of what's actually happening on the network or your target. So let's talk about Netcat real quick. There's a help file. So you can always type in netcat-h or space-h or just for short nc space-h. Now I'll bring up a comprehensive list of the help file. You can also man uh, Netcat for the manual pages for more detailed information. However, moving on to a TCP port scan, and this is by default here, you don't have to specify a certain switch. We're going to walk through the switches here in just one second. So the very first uh, thing we have to do here is issue NC or Netcat. You could type it out. However, I like to just use NC to keep it short, save a little bit of time. TAC V is verbose, and you could do two Vs here uh, to be even more verbose. And what that does is give some more information about the scan results or as detailed as it could possibly get from pulling down the results. And the next thing you're going to want to do here is a TAC W followed by a number. Uh, this could be from 1 to 60, depending on what you want to do. Uh, this here specifies that we're going to wait one second in between scan attempts. TAC Z means that we're setting it up to scan. And then the target here, uh, you would put the IP address or the host name here without the greater than, less than signs. And then after that, you would do a space followed by your port range or just one individual port. Say, for instance, you want to scan... Uh, just port 80, you can do that here too. However, uh, just keep in mind, the higher you set the time on the tech W uh, and the more ports that you add to it in your range, the more time it's going to take. And it could take a real long time. It's not as fast as Nmap uh, in certain ways, but uh, again, this is just a quick way to scan uh, you know, a small number of ports, if you will. So the next thing we do here is a UDP scan. Now, the difference between TCP and UDP are two different protocols. Uh, sometimes you'll find that you find more ports that are open on a UDP protocol than you would with a TCP. Now, uh, as a pen tester or any kind of cybersecurity analyst or even a networking professional, uh, it generally helps to do both types of scans just to understand and get a, a full picture of what open ports are available and services are available on that target or that network. So again, we'd follow the same syntax, NC, TAC, V, you could do the two Vs if you'd like. The TAC, W, 1, that's how long to wait. Now we could change the 1 to a 10, to a 60, to a 40, to whatever. Uh, I do suggest at least sending it to 1 as the very minimum. And then now here where we come into, you can see that there's a TAC, U right here. And that TAC U specifies to use the UDP protocol to scan out for UDP ports only. Uh, and then also, again, followed by the TAC Z. So you can see here, nothing much has changed. And again, the target, uh, that could be your IP address or a host name of your target that you're looking to scan, be it a host or a network, uh, without the greater than, less than signs, followed by the individual port or port range. So now let's go take a look at a practical hands-on example that you can follow along on your own machine. And uh, what we're going to do here is the port scanning. We'll both do TCP and UDP. Okay, so as you can see here, I've typed out the syntax correctly. And we have NC, TAC V, TAC wait for one second between results or between attempts and TAC-Z to set it up for scanning. And this is a uh, domain provided by nmap.org that you can actually scan uh, free of charge and free willing. Uh, do not try to exploit or attack this URL because they do log and they will trace you down and make bad times for your life. Uh, so be gentle here. Don't issue a million scans every single day. This is meant for just testing purposes. Uh, followed by ports uh, 1 through 23. Now, I don't want to do 1 through 10, 24. Otherwise, we'd be here for quite some time. Uh, so to save time, we're just going to do 1 through 23. And we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And you can see it only returned back one port, which is 22. And it says that's for SSH. And it says it's open. Now, let's go ahead and change this up a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and add the TAC U in here for UDP. So we can just up arrow and then space TAC U for UDP and hit enter. And you can see here it might take a few minutes. And 
Now you can see it already came back with one port, port six, uh, which is open. Uh, it doesn't give you the actual name of a service here. And you can see that it says open. Now, again, like I said, it's important to do UDP scans as well because you might be able to find some other ports that are only responding or only on the UDP protocol. Uh, you can see in our above scan up here, uh, we only came back with port 22 because that's a TCP port as well. So uh, that's the difference between port scanning with TCP and UDP. Now again, uh, uh, just to reiterate here, the more ports that you add on the end here, uh, the longer it's going to take for you to go ahead and get your results. Uh, that being said, 1 through 1024 is generally the standard ports that you would scan. However, uh, what I usually do when I'm doing this type of scan inside of Netcat is I do it in smaller blocks. So I would do 1 through 25, and then 26 through, say, 36, and so on and so forth. Maybe do 10 or 15, maybe 20 uh, at the most at the same time. Uh, now, you're free to do whatever you'd like, but for me, it just helps to organize it a little bit better, and it also helps to save a little bit of time. So let's get on into the next lesson of using Netcat for hacking.